Well, with regard to identifying patients who are candidates for DBS, um, I, I have sort of a simplistic approach. I joke with Dr. Oaken about this. I, you know, the neurologist complicates everything, and the neurosurgeon simplifies everything. So, you know, I have a simplistic approach to everything, and and I just it all boils down to a risk-benefit analysis. And if a 95-year-old man uh, sees a program on television about deep brain stimulation for Parkinson's disease, and he was given the diagnosis of Parkinson's disease six months ago because his, his primary doctor noticed that he had a little tiny bit of tremor in one of his hands, uh, but it's not debilitating. He's not even really on medication for it. And oh, by the way, this 95-year-old man had a heart attack three months ago, and he has diabetes, and you know he has emphysema, and he has all these other health problems. Um, obviously, the potential benefit there is extraordinarily low. Yeah, I could get rid of that little tremor, but what's the point of that? It's not going to improve his quality of life. But the risk is astronomically high in that clinical scenario. So that's an obvious way to eliminate that person. Um, and on the other side of the spectrum is someone who's young and healthy, doesn't have medical problems, so the surgical risk is very low. But the problems that they identify as the ones that impair their quality of life the most are the ones that I know from past experience tend to respond to deep brain stimulation. Those are the patients I get excited about. In fact, at this point, I have sort of a systematic way of doing my risk-benefit analysis, and it includes asking the patient to list, in order of importance, what bothers you the most. You know, what is it about your dystonia, your torticollis, your, your tremor, your Parkinson's symptoms? Uh, even your Tourette syndrome or OCD, what is it that impairs your quality of life the most? If, the, if we could get rid of one thing for you, what would it be? And then I go down the list, and they may, they may name five things that really bother them. And then I go through it with them, and I say, well, number one, great news. That's something we're really good at helping with. Number two, I can tell you right now, deep brain stimulation doesn't fix this. And number three and number five, not only does deep brain stimulation not fix this, sometimes it gets worse. Number four is a home run. We get that every time. Okay, so now you know and you have information that you can make your decision with to say, okay, well, if these are the things that are predictably going to get better uh, and the, I know how much those things bother me, okay, that's my potential benefit.